Welcome to this service of Holy Communion at the Church of the Nativity in San Rafael, California. For those of us who are participating virtually, the bulletin is available at nativityonthehill.org. We begin with a prelude of Saraban by Johann Sebastian Bach, played by our music director, Mr. Dylan Thomas. Or Mr. Dylan Snodgrass. <laughs> Together, 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. The first reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land, and the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, today I declare the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, with few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, 
the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruits of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to you house the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 The psalm today is 91, which is read responsibly from the asterisk. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My God, in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge. And the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall the plague come to you or cry. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all of your ways. They shall bear you in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample upon the lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall come upon me, and I will answer him. I will give him the trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him. And so be my salvation. A reading from the letter to the Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during these days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, 
It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it had been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you, then, will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. From this morning's gospel, one does not live by bread alone. The quotation, one does not live by bread alone, is famous. It was already famous in the time of Jesus. The quote comes from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, which incidentally we read from this morning. And Deuteronomy was and remains probably the most important book for Jews. Of course, thanks to the New Testament, which we also read, the quote has become well known to Christians. And the quote has even become well known in the secular world. When I googled it, I discovered there are many books entitled Not by Bread Alone. Some are devotional, and at least one is a cookbook. <laughs> in the Bible, at least, the bread in this quotation stands for something more than a food made from flour. In ancient Israel, all except the very wealthy, mostly ate bread with a little olive oil smeared on it. Because most people mostly ate bread, bread also could mean food in general. And by extension, it could even mean what was necessary for physical existence. In the Lord's Prayer, the petition, give us today our daily bread, means give us what we truly need to sustain us physically now. Consequently, one does not live by bread alone means one must not live simply by what is necessary for physical survival. Of course, what basic necessities are changes to some extent depending on social context. Those of us who are older remember a time when there were no personal computers. And of course, no one imagined they would ever need such a gadget. But for most people today, life is all but impossible without a personal computer. When I returned to my high school for my 50th reunion, I learned that the school now loans for free a personal computer to indigent students because it is impossible to get through high school without one. Most people spend the majority of their lives struggling to have necessities. In school we struggle to learn the skills that will enable us to earn a living later and afford the necessities. Then we spend years doing a job that pays for the necessities. Then we retire, perhaps 
even financially secure, only to discover that now we spend most of our time and energy struggling with health issues to keep us physically alive and ideally physically well. Because we spend so much time and energy struggling for the necessities, we can easily forget that the purpose of human existence is not obtaining basic necessities, perhaps with a few luxuries. Having struggled so long for the necessities, and maybe some luxuries, we are inclined to believe that if we merely accumulate more stuff and are financially secure, then our life has been a success. Especially in our materialistic society, many people make this mistake and assume if they have a swimming pool and a mansion, their lives have been spectacularly successful. But as Christians, we know that the purpose of life, of our own existence, is to serve God by loving God with all our heart and all that God has made, especially our neighbors. We are not on earth to survive. We are not here to enjoy primarily having stuff and being financially successful. We are here to love. And it is in loving that we are to find our deepest joy and our greatest security, a security that will, that will endure even after this earthly life and our need for stuff comes to an end. Today is the first Sunday in Lent, and it is customary in Lent to spend some special time for a particular discipline. Lent lasts about six weeks, and is a preparation for the great events of Good Friday and Easter. In Lent, we normally give up something and or take up something that involves sacrifice. When I was a child, I was nearly addicted to sweets, an attachment that incidentally led to many, tips, many tip trips to the dentist. I gave up sweets for Lent. Other people gave up other things such as alcohol and chocolate, or using vulgar language, or becoming angry at the least of uh, irritation. And I and others took up attending special weekday liturgies. The custom of giving up and taking up continues today. And as you'll see in the notes and the announcements, Nativity is offering you many opportunities. There will be prayer on Zoom on Tuesday evenings at 6 o'clock, a Lenten Bible study on Thursdays at 10.30, a work day on March 12th, and a meeting after church on March on March 20th to discuss outreach projects. Of course, our regular activities, such as the Contemplative Prayer Group at 5 on Wednesdays and the Noonday Prayer Service on Fridays, both on Zoom, will continue. You are invited to participate, even if you're only prepared to do so during Lent. Of course, taking part in special Lenten activities is a good thing by itself. What we give up are not the things that are good for us. Alcohol and chocolate and candy are not part of the diets that doctors recommend. And the things we take up are things that are good for us. For example, meditation is what doctors do recommend. Nevertheless, the most important benefit of special Lenten observances is that they remind us of what the goal of life truly and actually is. When we do things that are expressions of our love for others, as outreach projects are, or we do things that are expressions of our love of God, which is what being in prayer is about, we acknowledge that the love of God is, and others is the goal of our lives. And we acknowledge further that the goal is not to survive here on earth, but to prepare for an eternal life of love 
and service in heaven. This acknowledgement of what the true goal of life is also prepares us for Good Friday and Easter. On Good Friday, Jesus willingly sacrificed every physical necessity by dying on the cross to show God's love. And on Easter, Jesus rose from the dead to show that there is life after death and invite us to prepare for, us, prepare for it by obeying his example and his commandments. Those examples and commandments were to love God with all our being and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if we keep some Lenten discipline, even the chocolate and alcohol of Easter will taste especially good. Mm -hmm. And not only because we've been without them for Lent, such material things will also be more enjoyable because everything is more enjoyable if through love we are closer to one another and closer to God. And if we know that despite all the problems of this life, it leads to a glorious final destiny after death if we learn to love God and one another. you are able, as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God life from life. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and of his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Kyrie eleison, for the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Kyrie eleison. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our own bishop, for our clergy, Kirsten, Lynn, Scott, and Rebecca, and for all bishops and other ministers, and for the all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Hear you, For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. 
For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. For those in positions of public trust, especially our President Joe and our Governor Gavin, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Lord. For this congregation, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. We pray for our parish members, Jamie, Nancy, Marge, Donna, Dan, Nina, Marion, Penny, Judy, Steve, and Liz Juliet, and our friends and neighbors, Mary, P, Dan, Jan, John, Deidre, and Kim Heine, Layla, and Bridget. We pray to you, O Lord. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, we pray to you, O Lord. For all who have died in the communion of your church and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but life eternal, we pray to you, O Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
God be always with you. And also with you. announcements. Um, the, those of us who went to hear God spell uh, enjoyed it thoroughly, so if you haven't gone, we commend it to you. Uh, in the sermon, I went over all our Lenten activities, so I won't repeat that, but they are right there in front of you in the bulletin. However, I will mention that our day of service is coming up. It is this Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning with all kinds of possibilities for participation. Um, St. Francis of Novato is inviting people who have the gift of singing uh, to join their choir for a special service on April 3rd. We will, of course, with thanksgiving, receive your offerings of plate and pledge. You can contribute by sending a check to the church or using the Give button on our website. Do remember that this coming Sunday will be on Daylight Savings Time. So if you don't turn your clocks ahead, you'll arrive for the final hymn. All who participate in this Holy Communion virtually receive the full benefits of the sacrament by coming with the intention of being united with Christ and with one another. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin, by his grace we are able to triumph over every evil, and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy,
Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the least. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Lord. Thanks be to God.